Corey, this one's for you from an anonymous attendee who asks, past cycles show diminishing returns. Do you believe this will continue this cycle and beyond, considering where we are in the S-curve? So they cannot, in my view, keep diminishing to the degree that they have. Uh, so this is something that I, I saw in the data. Uh, interestingly, the the price rise to the peak in 2013 was 550x, so it was like two dollars to 1100, and then the next price rise was 110x. It was from like 180 bucks to 19,700 at the peak of 2017, uh, which was 110x, literally exactly one fifth of the spike in 2013. So guess what happened? The rise to uh, the peak in 2021 was another 80% less. It was one fifth. It was a 22 X from 3150 up to 69,000, whatever it was, uh, which is hilarious that it happened to be that exact reduction. We're not doing that again. So an 80% reduction would be like a four and a half X gain off of like 16 K that would literally be getting back to exactly the previous all time high. It would be 70 K. Uh, and we're going to do better than that at this next all-time high, whatever it is, or I'm in the wrong business. And I don't think I'm in the wrong business. I, I tried cool. really hard to get it right this time. Um, so yeah, I think that that idea of, you know, sort of geometrically diminishing returns, I think that breaks and I think it breaks this year. And uh, and then we'll see. Uh, as far as like these, these having cycles or election cycles or easy money cycles or whatever it is that's been going on kind of every four years, whatever you think is causing that, uh, it's hard. Cause I obviously am, you know, Chicago economics trained grad school and I, I want to believe in efficient markets as much as I possibly can, but there's something at play here. And so you got to watch what I do, not what I say. And I actually plan for Swan's investments and business and roadmap and our corp dev decisions and hiring decisions and all of that, assuming that we're on four-year cycles until we're not. And what I would say would, would mean that we're not on a cycle is when you have a rise in percentage terms mid-cycle, let's say, so not on a 13, 17, 21, 25, 29 year that's more in percentage terms than what you see in in the the rise according to like what the cycle would suggest so we're in cycles until we're not and i don't think they'll last and i think that the uh the having reward continuing to diminish is what is you know probably the reason for uh smaller smaller rises in the price from trough to peak like what i outlined with with the numbers um and then there's also just exogenous things like what if six billionaires decide to do the michael saylor saying thing and what if 10 countries decide to do the el salvador thing and what if they all decide to do it kind of soon and that happens to be in you know 2026 which is supposed to be a down year but they all pile in in 2026 and now you're just at 500k a coin immediately or a million dollars a coin. So I don't think we know what's going to happen, which is why it's called the future. And it's also why I just buy Bitcoin every single day and don't think about it. And I don't trade. Well said, Corey. You actually made me switch gears here for the second question because it was a really great tie into what you just said. <clears throat> and it was Kevin here who asked, um, when do you believe large corporations and institutions will look to replicate Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy, uh, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy's uh, success? Um, they're, Preston Pitch laid out a great roadmap for what he's doing, which is essentially uh, you know, a masterclass for Wall Street of what they should be doing, um, which is diluting his own stock to acquire so much Bitcoin, the pristine asset. So, so in short, Kevin's asking, when do you think that will happen on a larger scale for more institutions, nation states, publicly traded companies? So I don't think that there's any guarantee that anyone will ever follow the same strategy that Saylor did. But it's also not necessary that they do. Uh, his like very aggressive, let's kind of turn this into a Bitcoin holding company and, you know, kind of, I think 
80 or 90 percent of the value of the company at this point is the Bitcoin holdings, not the software business. Uh, I don't I don't know that another company will go that route, but I also don't think it matters because I do think that thousands and thousands of large companies and millions of small companies will add Bitcoin to their treasury assets and that will dwarf the purchases made by MicroStrategy.